All right, we're going to start reading from where we left off. All right, adolescence is a new is a new birth. G. Stalling Hall from 1844 through 1924. The human development is determined by the nature. It is a repetition of our ancestor oral record. A child has an animal-like deposition and goes through several growth stages. At adolescence, the evolutionary move momentum subsides. This is a time of individual change. During during this wild, lawless time, teenagers are increasingly sensitive and reckless, self-conscious, and prone to depression. The child then merges as an adult, a more civilized, higher-order being. Adolescence is the new birth. The word adolescence literally means growing up from the Latin adol. In theory, it describes a distinct stage between childhood and adulthood, but in practice often simply defines the teenage years. In most Western societies, the idea of adolescence was not recognized until the 20th century. Childhood ended and adulthood began at the center of Age typically at 18. Pioneer psychologist and educator G. Stalling Hall, in his 1804 book Adolescence, was the first academic to explore the subject. Hall was influenced by Darwin's theory of evolution, believing that all childrenhood, especially with regard to behavior and early physical development reflected the course of evolutionary change and that we can each develop in accordance with our ancient ancestral record. The key influence on Hall was the 18th century Stern und Drag Storm and Stress Movement of German writer and musicians which promoted total freedom of expression. Hall refers to adolescence as Sturm, Sturm and Drag. He con considered it a stage of emotional turmoil and rebellion with the behavior ranging from quiet mood moodness to wild risk-taking adolescence. He stated, craves strong feelings and new sensations. Moto, motoni, motoni and routine and detail are intolerable. Awareness of the self and the environment greatly increases. Everything is more keenly felt and sensations is sought for its own stake. Modern echoes. Many of the Hall's finds are echoed in research today. Hall believed that adolescents are highly susceptible to depression and describes a curve of dis spontaneously that starts at the age of 11, peaks at 15, then falls steadily until the age 23. Modern researchers acknowledge a similar pattern. The cause of a depression that Hall identifies are startlingly familiar spon suspects spacious of being disliked and having seemingly insuperable character faults and the fallacy of hopeless love he believes that the self-conscious of adolescence 
leads to self-criticism, criticism, and censor, censorousness of the self and others. His view mirrors later studies, which argues that teenagers' advanced reasoning skills allows them to read between the lines, while also magnifying their sensitive activity to situations. Even Hall's claim that critical activities is more prevalent in teenage years, peaking around 18, still holds true. But Hall was not totally negative about adolescence. He, as he wrote in Youth, it, its education, re, regment, and hygiene, adolescence is a new birth for him. the higher and more comp complete human traits are now born. So Hall, adolescence was in fact a necessary being of something much bigger. So a little quote here by G. Stalling Hall. Adolescence is when the very worst and best impulses in human soul struggles against each other for possession. All right. Uh, next one is by Herbman Ebbing uh, Hawks. In being hogs uh, from 1815 to 1909, 24 hours after learning something, we forged two thirds of it. And there's a picture Ed 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 Bean Hall's memory experiments shown that forgetting is most rapid within the first nine hours. Items forgotten can be relearned faster than new ones learned for the first time. Meaningful things are remembered for about 10 times longer than random meaningless things. Repeated learning sensation sessions over a long interval of time improves memory retention on any subject. Items towards the beginning and the end of a series or most easily remembered material that is studied beyond mastery, overlearned is remembered longer. In 1885, Herbert Mann Ed Bing Halls became the first psychologist to systematically study learning and memory by carrying out a long exhalting experiment on himself. Philosophers such as John Locke and Dave Hume had argued that remembering involves association linking things or ideas by sharing characteristics such as time, place, cause, or effect. Ed, Ed Bean Halls tested the effect of association on memory recording the results of mathematical to see if memory follows very very viable patterns memory experiments ed being halls started by memorizing lists of words and testing how many he c could recall to avoid the use of association he then created 2,300 non-sensible syllables, all three letters long, and using the standard word format of constant vowels, con constants, for example, Z-U-C and Q-A-X, grouping these into lists, he looked at each syllable for a fraction of a second, pause for 15 seconds before Going through a list again, he did this until he could recite a series according correctly at speed. He tested different list lengths and different learning intervals, noting the speed of learning and forgetting in 
at Bean Halls found that he could remember meaningful material such as a poem ten times more easily than his nonsense list. He also noted that the more times he, the stimuli, the nonsense sensible syllables were be repeated, the less time was needed to reproduce the memorized information. Also, the first few repetitions improved, proved the most efficient in memorizing a list. When looking at his results for uh, evidence of forgetting, Ed, Ed Bean Halls found unsurprisingly that he could t tend to forget less quickly the list that he could has spent the most time memorizing and that re that recall is best performed immediately after being learning at being halls also un uncovered an unexpected pattern in memory retention he found that there is typically a very rapid loss of recall in the first hour followed by the slightly slower loss so that after nine hours, about 60% is forgot. After 24 hours, about two-thirds of anything memorized is forgotten. Plotted on a graph, this shows a distinct forgetting curve that starts with a sharp drop followed by a shallow slope ebbing halls. Research launched a new field in inquiring and helped establish psychology as a scientific discipline. His meticulous methods re remained in the base basics of all psychology experimentations to this day. Uh, next one is Alfred Bennett. The intelligence of an individual is not a fixed quantity. In 1859, Charles Darwin set out his, his theory of evolution in on the origin of Pacific's pro, providing a framework of debate over whether intelligence was fixed by genetic inheritance or could be modified by circumstances. His cousin, Frank Galton, carried out tests on the conjunctive abilities about around 9,000 people in London in the early 1880s and concluded that the basic intelligence was fixed at birth. Around the same time, William Watton proposed the idea of intelligence quota IQ and made the in attempt to measure it. Watton works inspired studies into the measurement of mental abilities by the American psychologist. There's a little picture here. Intelligence testing can only measure an individual's mental abilities as particular time and particular content. Abilities change within short periods of time. They also change over a long term as part of the development process. Intelligence will alter during a person, person's lifetime. The intelligence of an individual is not a fixed quantity. James Cattle and were also to form the basis of Albert of Alfred's Bennett's research into human intelligence. Fan fascination with learning. Bennett studied law and natural science before psychology captured his interests. He was largely largely self-taught, although working with Jane 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 Martin Chercot at Paris Sepelt Street 
hospital for more than seven years and gave him a firm grasp of an experimental process with their their need to pre, pre precision and careful planning he described to study desire to study the human intelligence grew out of his fascination with the development of his own two daughters he noted that the speed and s with which his children absorbed new information varied according to how much they were playing paying attention content and children's frame of mind seemed to be conser crucial to learning on hearing of frank gallatin's test testing in london by by net um, decided to carry out his uh, own large-scale research of ascending differences in individuals abilities between various special interest groups such as mathematical chess players writers and artists at the same time he continued his study of fu fundamental functional intelligence of children noting that they became capable of certain skills at specific ages for example very young children were not capable of not capable of abstracting thought he seemed to be a hallmark of an increased level of intelligence that was directly attributed to age. In 1899, Bennett was in, in, invited to join a new organization de, dedicated to the educational research La Soci Libre pour El Tubre psychological de event the free social id of psychology psychological study of children within a short time he became the group's leaders and began to publish articles and information used to teach and educate officials Around the same time, it became mandatory for all children in France to attend schools between the ages of 6 and 12. Binet was asked to consider how to develop a test that would identify children who might have learned disabilities so that they could reside, receive schooling that was appropriate to their needs. In 1804, this work led to Bennett being asked to join a government commission to de de devise a method of ascending learning potential in infants and learning and he made it his mission to establish the difference between the normal and intelligent challenges children and to find a way to measure these diff differences. The Binet Sin Simon Scale Bin Binet was joined in his task by the through Bon Sinman, a research scientist at the Sorbonne, Sorbonne's Laboratory of Experimental Psychology, where Burnett was being directed since 1894. It was to be the beginning of a long and fruitful collaboration between the two scientists. By 1905, Bennett and Simmons had created their first test labeled New Methods of Diagnosing Indicity in Epilepsy and Moron Status. Soon after, they introduced the re revised versions for children ages 3 to 13, which was 
simply called the Binet Simon scale. It was revised once again in 1808 and then again in 1811 based on their many years of observation children Binet and Simmons put together 30 tests of increasing difficulties using a range of tasks that reflected the average abilities of children to at different ages the easier tasks included following a beam of light or engaging in basic conversation with the person who was testing them slightly more difficult tasks including pointing to various named body parts repeating a series of two digits repeating simple sentences defining basic words such as a house or a fork in the most different difficult tests children were asked to describe the difference between pairs of similar objects and re reproduce drawings from memory and to construct sentences around three given words the very hardest tasks included repeating seven random digits follow, finding three rhythms in french words ob absence and answering questions such as my neighbor had has been receiving there's a little picture here um quote by Albert Bennett, there is an intelligence of fundamental agency and lack of alteration of which was the greatest importance of practical life and that is judgment. Okay, so my neighbor has been received strange visitors. He was has received in in turn a doctor a lawyer and then a priest what is taking place Bennett and simmons tested their skill on a sample of 50 children divided equally between five ages age groups these children had been selected by their schools teachers and begin beginning being average for their age providing a baseline measure measure of normality against their children and all abilities could be measured Bennett and Simmons 30 tasks arranged in order of difficulty were to be carried out under careful control conditions Bennett had learned from observation observing his daughters that children are easily distracted and that their levels of tension play a critical role in their ability to perform he saw intelligence as a mixture of men multiple face facelets mental fatality met met ma cultures and that ob uh, operate within a real world and ever-changing circumstances are controlled by practical judgment intelligence is not fixed Bennett was always frank frank about the uh, limitations of Bennett and simmons scale he was keen to point out that the scale simply ordered children from their performance of intelligent tasks to relate to their to other children of similar age the test of 1908 and 1911 placed the greater and emphasis on tests for different age groups and it was there this that eventually led to the concept of mental age. Bennett also stressed that mental development progressed at different rates and could be influenced by the environmental factors. He, he preferred to think of this test as a way to assessing mental levels of particular points of time because this allowed for an individual's levels to change as their circumstances changed this was the op 
opposition to view of an influential English philosophic philosoph psychologist Charles Spearman, who later processed that intelligence was based on bi biological factors alone. Bennett maintained that a child's intelligence is not a fixed quantity, but grows just as in as the child does and that even though he had devised a way to qualify quantifying it no number could be could ever give an accurate measure of a person's intelligence a complex picture Bennett thought could only be formed from an a, accompanying case study. Ultimately, Bennett did not believe that it was possible to measure intelligence uh, ab tuned as if it were a length of or capability. It was only possible to classify it, used and abused. In, in 1908, the American psychologist uh, Henry H. Godred uh, traveled to Europe where he discovered the Bennett Simon test. He translated them, distributing around 22,000 copies around the U.S. to be used for testing in schools. Unfortunately, while Bennett had been careful not to attribute intelligence to inheritance, Her her heritage factors, Godred thought that it was genetically determined. He saw the Bennett and Simmons scale was scale has a way to root out feeble feeble minded people for compulsory sense sternization. In 1916, yet another American psychologist, Le Le Lewis Terman, modified the Bennett Simmons scale using test results from a large sample of American children. He renamed it the Stanford Bennett scale. It was no longer used solely to identify children with specific needs, but to pick out those who might be suitable for streaming off into more vocal or job ordin a job ordinated educated education and effectively con condemning them to a lifetime of mental work. Terman like Godred believed that intelligence was inherited and unchangeable so no amount of schooling could alter it. Bennett was probably unaware of these uses of his work for quite some time. He was an associated figure who rarely concerned himself with professional development outside his immediate sphere. He never traveled outside France, which where the by net Simmons scale was not adopted during his lifetime. He so he was never com comforted by any modification of his work when he eventually became aware of the foreign ideas being grafted on his instrument. He strongly condemned those who with brutal pessimism and deformable ver verdicts promoting the concept of intelligence as a single consent constant Bennett con uh, concept of the IQ test remains the basics of intelligence testing today despite its shortcomings it was generated research that has advanced our knowledge 
knowledge of human intelligence. There's a quote by Alfred Binet. I have not sought to stretch a method of measuring, but only a method of classification of an individual. All right. The next one is by Pure Janet in 1859 through 19... 47 the unconsciousness scenes the men behind the curtain there's a little picture here if if someone shows psychological signs of terror or distress for no apparent reason they may be may be caused by the subconscious idea that therapy reveals to be related to an early trauma incident this may be severe case led to dissociation and extension of two separate consciousness between around 1880 and 1910 there was a great deal of interest in the con contradiction of dissociation the separation of some mental processes from the person's consciousness conscious mind and normal everyday personality mild dissociation in which the world seems dreamlike and unreal is common and affects most people at some time or an, or other it is often caused by illness such as flu or drugs including alcohol and may lead to particular or complete loss of memory during and after the periods of dissociation. In rare cases of what was then described as multiple personality disorder, a person appears to have two or more distinct personalities such as extreme example are now classified or dissociation identified disorders. The French philosopher and physician Pure Janet is credited with being the first person to study and describe dissociation as a psych psych psychiatric condition in the late 1880s and the early 1890s. He worked with the soft Pendrick Hospital in Paris where he treated a patient who was suffering from hyper hysteria. He published case studies a several several women who shown extreme symptoms. A patient called oh there's a little quote by Pirit Jan Janet these people who people these people are pers per persecuted by something and you must investigate carefully to get to the root. Okay. A patient called Lucy, for example, would usually be, c be calm, but then suddenly become agitated, crying and looking terrified for no apparent reason. She seemed to have three distinct personalities with Janet named Lucy 1, Lucy 2, and Lucy 3, and would change between them unexpectedly, especially when um, hypnosed. Lucy 1 had only her own memory as Lucy 2, but Lucy 3 could remember events relating to all th three personalities. Significantly, Lucy Three would recall a traumatic event while on vacation at the age of seven when she was terrified by two men who were hiding behind a curtain. Subconscious trauma. Lucy's childhood trauma, Janet concluded, was the cause of her dissociation as he wrote in Psychological Autumn automatism to have one body in the posture of terror is to feel the emotion of terror 
and if their posture is determined by the subconscious idea, the patient will have a emotion, the emotion alone in his consciousness without knowing why he feels this way. As he, as their terror took hold, Lucy would say, "I'm afraid, and I don't know why." The unconscious said, "Janet, I have." is having its dream it seems the man behind the curtain and put the body in a posture of terror janet added that he believed trauma events and stress could be caused dissociation in everyone with a predisposition janet describes the part of the mind that he believed was behind uncharacteristic and dis, dis disturbed behavior of the subconscious but sigmas fred thought this term was too vague and instead labeled the source of his patient's mental trauma as the unconscious fred also developed janet's ideas stated that the dissociation was a universal defense mechanism janet worked Janet's work was neglected for decades as a use of hypnosis to investigate and treat mental illness was discredited. However, since the late 20th century, it has again attached its interest from psychologists studies dissociation uh, disorders. Childhood traumas may appear to be forgotten, but according to Prior's Janet's Janet, they can often remain in subconscious parts of the mind, giving rise to mental problems in later life. Right. Behavioralism responds to our environment. All right. By the 1890s, psychology was accepted as a scientific subject separate from its philosophical origins. Laboratories and university departments had been established in Europe and in the U.S., and a second generation of psychologists was em emerging. In the U.S., psychologists anxious to put the new discipline on a objective study footing reacting against the introspective philosophical approach taken by William Jan James and others. Introspection, they felt, was by definition subjective and theorized based on it could be neither proven nor disproved. Its psychology was to be treated as a science it would have to be based on obs observable and measurable phenomenon. Their solution was to study the manifestation of the working of the mind behavior and under strictly controlled laboratory conditions. As John B. Watson put it, psychology is that division division of natural sciences which take human behavior and doing and saying both learned and unlearned as its un subject matters. Early behaviorism included Edward Thord like Edward Tolman and Edward Gu Guthrie Guthrie dis decided designed experiments to obs observe the behavior of animals in careful division situation divided devised situations and from these tests interfered theories about how human interacted with their environment as well as about learning memory and condition conditioning response behaviorism and experiment were influenced by similar experiences devised by psychologists studying physical processes, and it was a Russian psychologist, Ivan Pavlov, 
who unwittingly provided a basic basics for the emergent behavioristic behavioristic psychology in his now famous study of salvation salvation in dogs pavla love described how a animal's response to a stimulus in the process of conditioning and gave psychologists the foundation on which to build the central idea of behaviorism the the notation of conditions often referred to as stimulus response is our psychology shaped the form the form behaviorism was to take the behavior is to approach concentrated on observing concentrating on observing responses to external stimuli ignoring internal mental states and processes which were thought to be impossible to ex mind scientific and th therefore could be not included in any analysis of behavior this shifts from mind to behavior as a as a basics of study of psychology was revolutionary and was even accompanied by the behavior manifesto the paper of the paper psychology was as a behavioristic views it's delivered in 1913 by Watson in the US which was leaded led in leading the field of psychology behaviorism became the dominant approach for the next 40 years evolving from the idea of pavlovian's or classical conditioning came Watson's assertion that environmental stimuli alone shape behavior in innated or inherited factors are not involved the next generation include the ra ra radical behaviorism b f skinner who proposed and rethinking of a stimulus response noting in this theory an op opt-in opt 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 conditioning which stated that behavior was shaped by consequences not by the preceding preceding stimulus although the concept was similar to the idea proposed by William James it radically altered the course of behaviorism taking into account genetic factors and explaining mental state states as a result rather than as a cause of behaviorism the cognitive revolate revelation revolvation by the mid 20th century however psychologists were questioning the behavioristic approach in theology the study of animal behavior shown the importance of instinctive as well as learned behavior a finding that sat, sat uncomfortably with strict ideas of conditioning a research to skinner's idea also sparked in the cognitive revolution revolution which tuned attention once again from behavior back to the mind and mental processes a key figure at this time was edward tolman a behavior is behaviorism those theories had not dismissed the importance of per perception and con connation due to its in interest in german based gestalt psychology advancing in neuroscientists explored by another behaviorism carl lashley also played a part in a shift that emphasizes from behavior to the brain and its working 
behaviorism had now run its course and was suspended by the various branches of cognitive psychology. However, its legacy, particular in establishing a scientific method for the subject and its providing models that could be used in psychological experimentation, was a lasting one. Behavioral therapy is also still in use today as a essential part of cognitive behavioral therapy. Go ahead and end there. And leaving off with the sight of lasting tasty food making a hungry man's mouth water.